stacking terrains. David Brennan came up with the idea to stack terrains with different resolutions, one above the other. I used this idea to have a bit of fun with one of our high resolution terrain sets. Number one to be precise. I use terrain and materials from this set. The results can be quite stunning. Sparse spot is an example. Moving in this value, in the back and turning the camera to look down the valley and swapping out the HRI, resulted in this outlandish landscape of the eye in the sky. Yet another render using this method gave also quite nice results. And there is no cheating. All three renders are pure and single price renders without any post-production. Let's have a look at this last one, Twin Peak. I have removed the HRI and replaced it with white sky dome color. This is not very ideal, but we don't want to be distracted by other things. We just want to have a look at the terrains. There are three highland terrains, one above the other. This render has only the planetary resolution visible. The other two are hidden. If the planetary resolution one is hidden and the gigantic resolution one enabled, we have another terrain because it has another material. The appearance changes again if I hide this one again and just enable the lowest resolution one and this is the material we used on this one. And here I have made visible all three and this is the result we get. Of course, the sky and the light make also a huge difference. Here are the three terrains as they were stacked. The red part is from the planetary 4096 terrain, the blue from the gigantic 2048 one and the green from the 1024 massive one. So this is how the examples shown at the beginning were done. Now the question is, does this also work using price generated terrains as well? Yes, it does. And here is how it is done. Start price, create a terrain, hold down the control key while you click on the thumbnail to get a gray default terrain. Go to terrain editor, get rid of it by clicking on new, open the fractal drop down and find a procedural you like. I take Mordor and I click several times on fractal until I think I get something usable like this one. Next thing I have to do is to switch off random extent, random position and random character. It is tedious to open this drop down three times so just hold down the shift key and click on any one of these three and you have them switched off all at the same time. Now we can set this to planetary resolution and because there is no random option selected anymore when I click on fractal the same terrain is generated again in the full resolution and this takes a while you have to wait until the 3D preview updates. This may take really several seconds. So it has updated and you can watch on the lower right corner when the accept button starts to animate you can click on it. So now the terrain is ready. I click on it. It takes another few seconds until we have the terrain in the GUI. So here we are, we have our terrain. First thing we do is we give it a sensible name. 
Mordor 1496. It is very important that all terrains have the same size, so I give it exactly 81.92 and I also give it just a simple color. Let's make it red. So we have the first terrain. We generate another terrain holding down the control key, click on terrain, we have a default terrain, new, I set the resolution to 2048 gigantic resolution, click on fractal, it also takes a moment but not so long like the huge one, here we are, ok, in the attributes there will be more door 2048 and here again I want 8192 exact and I give it a color in this case I give it blue and I generate a terrain once again going into terrain editor click on new set resolution to massive resolution click once on fractal and here we are that would be more door 1024 set the size again to 8192 exact and give it green color so here we are let's render and we see that the green is really a bit overwhelming so what we're going to do is we have it already selected and we move it down a bit now we have to do this carefully in the objects attributes numerically because all the other controls are two cores so I set it to zero and see what we have with this well, I think this isn't too bad. Yes, I think it isn't too bad. So we keep this. Now select all three terrains and group them. And now you can resize them. I go for 3500 by 3500 by 800 and then I can set the origin at 400 and have it just down to the ground. Using the perspective camera is the better idea than using the director's camera. I set now the perspective camera to a wider fourth. I've got to move up quite a bit. Okay, I stopped the video just to adjust the camera. A little bit this is always something that takes a little moment. It is a good idea at this stage to get the sky and light approximately because materials are very dependent on the lighting. Go to the sky lab and select a sky from the library. I go for the installed daytime lazy afternoon. First thing I do is to set ambient to fully white so I have the full control also in the materials lab. Sky Dome color is black. It's really not of great use. Sun and Moon shadows should be at 100 and temporarily I switch Sun Moon visible off. For the atmosphere I give it a start at about density of 80 and a thickness of about 7. Let's render in scene okay so we really have some haze in here now I go to the IBL tab I want to have an IBL for the ambient I use HRI image I use SkyDOM only and I use Sky and that's the reason why I switched off Sun Moon visible and I accept this size because we do not render it in the background so it is absolutely unnecessary first thing I go back to switch the sun moon visible again. Nothing changed here. We have the sun disabled which is a good moment. 
I also disable cost shadows. Don't need that one. And now I adjust with the HDRI effect so I get a bit light on the shadowy parts. I think I have a bit a lot of haze. Put that a bit down so I get a bit more. Okay, I settle with this setting for haze 80 and 5. We can see here it is quite dark so we can fill this with HRI. Going to 30, that's probably already a bit much. 25, but now I enable the sun and the sun might need a bit more of power. So, okay, we have roughly our light setting. Now we've got to give the materials. First we select the planetary resolution at 4096. Go to the materials and from the terrains we choose rocky. We get terrain number two which is in the fourth line, the second column. Just accept it and we already see that we have the terrain here. How we select the blue one and give it some vegetation terrain and here we go for jungle 2 which is in the second row, the eighth column. Oh, we have some greenery here and the green one with the lowest resolution we give it a snowy one and we use the snow on the heights 3 which is the fifth in the second line. Now let's look how this appears. It's not that bad so we've got to move around the sun a bit perhaps. Okay, I've settled at this sun position. I increased HRI effect a tiny bit and also increased the sun intensity to 250 and this is what we get, which doesn't look too bad. A bit funny mountain here, but that's the way we've generated it. That's a simple example. You may now start to use different materials on the terrains. Change the light from the sky, the sun and the camera positions. Hopefully this video will encourage you to give this stacked terrains method a go. Rice comes with everything you need. Only a bit of patience is required from your side. Have fun! Cheers now!